Okay, me down. <laughs> this is funner. Oh shit, I don't have it open. Okay. All right, I call to order the regular council meeting of Wednesday, February 7th, 2024. And Excuse me. Can everyone speak very slowly because I have to do both tonight? Oh, yes. I'm the minute taker as well as. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, we will yes. talk very slowly. Okay. 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 Um, Item number two, adoption of agenda 2.1, recommendation that the council adopts the agenda. Seconded by Councillor Wall, thank you very much. Any discussion? None. All those in favor? Unanimous and carried, wonderful. Um, item number three, adoption of minutes, that the minutes from the January 17th, 2024 council me meeting, oh, they'll be on the next one, Never mind. I read that, thought it said that they were on there. <laughs> Having a moment. Okay, so those will be on, on our next meeting. Um, I'm number four, introduction of late items, none. I'm number five, unfinished business and business arising from the minutes, none. Uh, I'm number six, new business 6.1 recommendation. Recommend that council considers the resolution for the South Peace Sub Regional Recreational Cultural Services Bylaw 2521 2024 and receives the report for discussion. Seconded by Councillor Rabble, thank you. Discussion? Um, yes. Yeah. It looks like a really interesting opportunity, good approach, having scholarships and bursaries available and grants for various activities clubs. You know, I support the regional district in supporting our local talent and especially for the pursuit of pro-secondary education. Yeah, that looks good. I said, I'm still doing me. I'm looking for my agenda. It's literally on my laptop somewhere. <laughs> okay, any other discussion? No? Okay, all those in favor? Uh, all those in favor of what? Is it for letter of support? Oh, sorry about that. Well, it's just receiving it for discussion. So nobody at this point in time has made a motion to do a letter of support. Is that something council would be interested in doing? I would yes. do it. We're not looking for a motion of support. We're looking for a motion to approve them going forward with this. Mm. That's what they want. Oh. I will make the motion to approve their going forward with this. <laughs> That's good. Perfect. Seconded by Councillor Rabble. Thank you. Any discussion regarding that? Okay. All those in favor? Wonderful. Okay. 6.2 recommendation. The Council receives the request for the 2024 Proclamation of Purple Day for consideration. Seconded by Councillor Wall. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. I found my agenda. All right. Hang on. Let me go to that page. I gotta read it. Um, page eight. 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 It's a long one. We're going to stand. It's up to you. <laughs> you um, can just say that you declare um, March 26th Purple Day, and then I can just send her the proclamation. Okay, well then, uh, I, Danielle Beach, as Mayor of Pooskoopy, hereby proclaim Tuesday, <coughs> March 26th, 2024, as Purple Day in the village of Puskabi. Perfect. Do I need all those in favor and all that? Yeah. Just all in favor. All in favor? Okay. and Carey, thank you. Wonderful. Okay. <coughs> Six point three recommendation. The council receives the interim financial report information and discussion. Okay. okay. Seconded by Councillor Rabble. Thank you very much. I had something written on this. Councillor Wall. I have one small question. Is the one dollar that we see in that one item line there for the lease of the old library to the church? Oh, shoot. Oh, that would be um, other 2023 item actions. A, isn't it? Item A or item B, it's it in there. So uh, it is on page. I'm actually well, not sure what that one dollar is for. One dollar under other. I just want to make sure that's not a minor error, or if that's just the one dollar that we get from the church. Mm -hmm. I think it's a minor error. Is that just a space so filler? I <laughs> added up all of the numbers, and they do add up to four million two hundred twenty thousand one hundred thirteen. Okay, I will have to look into that. Okay. I'm not. It's, it's a dollar. I'm not. I know. I just wanted to make sure that it's supposed to be there. <laughs> okay, uh, I had a question. 
So, in reading this report, am I understanding correctly that we're currently under budget for 2023 projects and are on side with the PRA agreement where 70% of it has gone towards capital? Yes. So, we're kicking butt and kicking it. We are perfect. Nice. If that could just be the headline, I would just be like, you are kicking butt and kicking it. Perfect. Wonderful. Thank you. That's such wonderful news. Okay, Councilor Rapp. Can an explanation be provided for the accumulated surplus end of year for 2023 actuals available on page 12? Like, is that an ongoing every year it accumulates? Like, that's not just raw surplus per the year, right? It's, it says $2 million. Mm -hmm. I will have to get back to you on that one. Okay. Councilor Wolf? I, I want to thank our staff for providing these figures the way they have here because it looks like we're doing really, really well for last year. I, I don't know if that number, Councilor Gravel, is so high as a surplus because we got grants we weren't necessarily expecting to receive or, or things like that. We, and we did save on our conference budget quite a bit, and we did save in other places that were. We, we budgeted money that we didn't spend, so I, I do want to thank our staff for for that. For these figures, they're phenomenal, in my opinion. Yeah, it's been wonderful. I do have a question, though. Yeah. We have income, or where was it? What page is it? There's somewhere here, it's, there's, a, there's a line that says land, or like all of these, like general government land. Uh, prospective sales, land, solid waste, land, development, land. Is that that's under capital? Yes. Those are just accounts. The general ledger. Yeah. Yes. I'm just curious what goes, like I know we don't have anything in, like it's, there's no changes. However, what would go in, like what was that account before? Um, well, any improvement in capital. Land, capital land purchases. Okay, because below it has land improvement. No, no, no. One's under water, so they're under each individual. So land purchased for public works, like mm -hmm. transportation, land purchased for parks and rec, land purchased for water, or improvements on there. Oh, okay. They're, they're very old accounts. Okay, I, I'm not, it's, it's not a concern on my end. I'm just like, I wonder what that is. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? Councilor Rabble? So essentially a healthy balanced budget where we're getting inside with things and we have a little bit of extra that we weren't exactly anticipating because of increased investment and slightly less expenditure is my interpretation of this. I believe we have quite a bit of expenditure savings to come up with a million dollars like that, like that's yeah, we're doing pretty good. We spent a million dollars less than we anticipated on spending. Like, that's amazing. Okay. All right. All those in favor? Unanimous and carried. Thank you. All righty. Okay, moving on to item number seven, correspondence. So, all I ask is you go in order, please. Yes. <laughs> okay. Let me open up my notes. All right, well, I wanted to talk on 7.5. So does anybody want to talk on between 7.1 and 7.5? Are we going to go through one at a, at a time? We really need to all just sit down and flip a coin and decide who's going to do this. Well, um, 7.1, that council received a year in report from the Pusuki Volunteer Fire Department for information. Okay, seconder. Councilor Wall, thank you. Councilor Rabble. I'd like to congratulate them on their continued service and their response to calls. And I understand it's a mix of both inside Poos and outside of Poos and River, Peace River Regional District Area D, um, and that they're such an integral part of our community. So I congratulate them on their service and thank you for their service in 2023. I just want to comment on the morale change within our fire department this last year. There's been Prior, like two years ago, you know, there was a lot of questions brought up and there was a lot of concern. And and now I think we're doing a lot better. 
And I think it's showing with our volunteer enrollment, with the training that's being done, with and just the morale in general. And I'm really, really happy to see the numbers we're seeing. And I'm, I'm very proud of our fire department for what they're, they are accomplishing with, quite frankly, a very small budget for a fire department doing what they do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know they've been doing a wonderful job. Sorry. <laughs> okay, any other discussion on that? Yeah. All those in favor? Unanimous and carried, thank you. Would anybody like to talk on item 7.2? So, all those in favor of receiving for information? Can we just carry on? I know I never know, but. If you're not going to talk about it, just move on. Can you know, I, mean, I propose a motion? Can I propose the motion that we accept 7.2, 7.3, and do you want to talk about 7.4? No, 7.5. 7.2, 3, and 4 as information. Councillor Apple, perfect. All those in favor? Unanimous. Um, came in the list 7.4. The council received a letter from the district of Sycamus to Premier Eby for information. Okay, and seconder, Councillor Rabel, thank 7. you. 7.5, dear people, word, thank you. Sorry, who seconded that? Uh, Councillor Rabel did, thank you. Um, so, this support for Bill 34, um, I feel like it would actually be beneficial for our community to write a letter of support supporting Bill 34 as well. And maybe take a copy and send it to the yeah. city of Dawson Creek and that could be PLMB. Um, as this did impact our entire region as, as well. And, and, you know, I really think that um, the more people that reach out with frustration at the current government for the decisions that they're making, you know, the more likely they might be to actually start taking notice to everybody who's reaching out. So um, I'd like to the motion on, on the floor that staff write a letter in support of um, the government supporting Bill 34 um, and maybe add some perspectives that we and Chris could be here as well. And that, that letter is then sent to the city of Dawson Creek and the Peace River Regional District. You seconding that motion? I will. Thank you, Councillor Wall. Uh, Councillor Rattle? Uh, and that it be sent to the Premier in conjunction with Sixth Well, yes, yes. And it be sent to Premier EB. Sorry, I get all mixed up when I have to do this again just now because I don't like doing it. I like to do it on there and it's not working. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't work for, for me. Sorry, Councillor Rebel. Um, I think simply just the title of Bill 34, Restricting Public Consumption of Illegal Substances Act, shows where we're at right now. Mm -hmm. um, we had spoken to, I had spoken to this as well at UBCM in September 2023. Yeah. But I have spoken to quite a few people about this with, in regards to public consumption in and around parks and playgrounds, the places where children frequent, that, the, that from my understanding, UBCM lobbied the provincial government to move forward with this, and that simply they're um, preventing that from happening. So yeah, I think this is something that our communities urgently need at a minimum mm -hmm. to secure this, you know, you're walking down the street and you don't want to inhale something that you never intended to inhale. Yeah. And it may be unidentified and may contain who knows what. And I think we must consider the, the safety of our community members, especially the young community members. Well, and then not only that, but we also have to think about our staff that are cleaning up these parks oh, and, yeah. and the risk that is posed to them potentially as well. And, and, and so that's another sort of aspect of that that I was, I'm quite concerned about as well with the open community parks. So. Councillor Wall? Uh, as Councillor Rattle was saying, we spoke about this at uh, UBCM to jeers and cheers. <laughs> some standing ovation, some not so much. much. Um, <laughs> I spoke briefly about it as well, asked a couple questions at UBCM about it. And if we could, in the letter, um, for support for Bill 34, make the assertion that it doesn't necessarily go far enough. Yes. Because they're just, they're talking about restricting the use of public of these illegal substances within certain areas but not providing any background on any punishment or any repercussion that would take place for someone who is. So there's they can ban it again, but if there's no repercussion, mm -hmm. what's going to actually prevent someone from doing so? Yeah. Is that an amendment that you'd be okay with? No amendment. I think that we're going to draft the letter. Yeah, and, and then they'll bring it back. And the suggestion. And, that and don't worry, I will be reaching out to council for wording. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Please check your emails. Just, <laughs> I do support Bill 34. I just, I really don't think it goes far enough. Mm -hmm. Because you can say don't do it, but then if there's nothing to stop you, then. Yeah. What? <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah, so once that letter is, is drafted, then we can kind of make any tweaks that you would like to it or be appropriate for I don't think I need any tweaks. So just... Thank you. Welcome, My last comment to this would be that as we navigate decriminalization, the impacts to our community, some unintended, unperceived, some perceived, and not abated. And so I'd like to see something done at a minimum. And this is this is a bare minimum. But I do appreciate that we're moving forward with a letter of support in this matter. Yeah. I have one question. Do we know if this letter was sent to our neighboring municipalities? Um, um Ms. Stokes? If you look on page two, it'll tell you who it's been sent to. It was sent to the MP of North Okanagan, MLA Shushwap, and BC municipalities and, and regional districts. So basically, it was sent to everybody. Okay, I was just wanting to make sure that. Uh, I was just trying to think if I read this on the agenda for the PRD. That's why I was like, did I read that on there? I can't remember. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, all those in favor of staff drafting a letter in support of Bill C, uh, Bill 34. Unanimous yeah, in Perfect. Uh, would anybody else like to lift any, anything from correspondence? Um, 7.6 The council receives the West Fraser sawmill closure media release for information. Now your seconder. Councillor Johnston, thank you. Councillor Rattle? Um, yeah, it is unfortunate that West Fraser has decided to close this operation and that our neighbours to the south are suffering through the same challenges that communities here, like Chatwin and others, have suffered through as well. I'm curious as to what we could do to support these folks through this time. And I understand that there are some resources in regards to job loss and whatnot produced by other communities that I did see when we were down at these conferences, how to navigate job loss, but it's unfortunate that it's come to that state. Mm -hmm. I hope that somebody would be able to pick back up this operation and continue to move forward with it. Um, but I'm just curious as to what we could do to assist them in this time. Um, I know I spent quite a bit of time with Mayor Story um, at the LGLA, <coughs> also there, and we did sort of touch a little bit on the impact this is having on her community, and, and she is working with um, lots, and lots of her local partners and, and trying to mm. navigate this very sudden change. Um, they are working as best as they can with the families and stuff at this point. Um, I am like kind of in back and forth contact with her at this point and she's not really mentioned anything that other municipalities could step out and do, but mm. I know that she's she's definitely struggling in that. That's that something that we had, had talked about when I saw her. So come so well. It's really, really sad to see West Fraser closing these mills all around. And I know mm. Fraser Lake is a very resilient community and they have I, I've met some of the leadership there and then they're they will persevere. Mm -hmm. However, I just want to touch on the fact that the Land Act is changing and that is something that's on a provincial level. However, it is, it's in the, it's, it's proposed on the provincial level right now and it's creating a lot of uncertainty regarding our resource sectors. So if you're worried about resource-based industries at home or at a lot, most people in our community here, 60% roughly, work either in a resource-based industry or in support of a resource-based industry. So that land act change is something I implore, or implore. implore people to look into and, and write and write to your MLAs and, the, and David Eby because the things we're seeing down south, it, it, it's not going to end there. And it's really unfortunate to see. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you very, very much. All those in favor of receiving this for information. I will bring back to council if anything changes from uh, Mayor Story. If she asks for anything, I will let you guys know. Okay, anything else on the correspondence calendar from 7.7 .7 or 7.8? Councillor Wall? I move to accept 7.7 .7 and 7.8 as information. Seconded by Councillor Johnston. Thank you. Um, Councillor Rattle? Um, in regards to specifically 7.8 on the legislative reform initiative, um, 
Okay, he just made a motion he to made a motion for info. I pass it, and then you round it up. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's important that we consider the regional district's abilities and the enhancement of those abilities. Okay. <laughs> May I receive my motion? And just do 7.7 7 for info, maybe? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, yes, I would like to see 7.7 7 as information. I amend my motion. And then can we have a first and second? Yeah, and second is seconder on um, amending it for just 7.7. 7. Can I get a seconder on that? Can I get you? Councillor Rowell. No, Councillor Rowell. Okay, so 7.8, you're wanting to lift it? Uh, the council receives the legislative reform initiative update for information. Seconder? Councillor Wall, thank you. No, you may speak, Councillor Thank you. So, essentially, what this conversation is exploring is the outdated Local Government Act and the regional district's place in it. Um, essentially, they're wondering if they should strike a steering committee, a working group within UBCM, or a joint local government project. I think a combination of the two would be very helpful. Um, however, I think we, I believe that we should issue a letter of support for this and that we should help move this forward um, in the coming, you know, sessions of the local government academy and the UBCM that's coming up, right? Mm -hmm. So if I may, I propose the motion that um, staff draft a letter of support in regards to the legislative reform initiative um, that both option one and two be considered. Okay, um, can you read out option one? I'm just looking for it here. Uh, page 33, options for steering and managing the legislative reform initiative. Option one, UBCM executive would form a working group on legislative reform comprised of representatives from municipalities, regional districts, First Nations, UBCM, and ministerial staff. Option two, this would be structured as a joint local government project with local governments contributing funding to form a working group on legislative reform comprised of representatives from municipalities, regional districts, First Nations, UBCM, and ministerial staff. As you see, there's quite the overlap between the two options. Mm -hmm. They have their pros and cons. I don't think we get into the weeds of explicitly what they're doing, but I think the project itself in regards to the Community Charter and the Local Government Act, um, there are needs to update to support our regional districts in their function as regional governance and as a confederation of municipalities. Okay, and you're wanting to send this to the municipalities here that are labeled, so the Nanaimo, uh, the regional district of Nanaimo, Alberni, oh I can never say that last word, <laughs> regional district, the Fraser Valley regional district in Chilliwack, and the Don, Don Lidstone. Well, Most likely just regional district of Nanaimo, like showing our support for this, okay. um, because it was brought up at the at UBCM, um, and then they're basically going, okay, how do we move forward with this? Um, I think it's significant for the PRD uh, because of our unique situation with a variety of rural residents that end up becoming underrepresented through the current structures. So anyway, I'm in favor of municipalities and regional districts jointly lobbying the provincial government through the mechanism set out by the UBCM to form whatever committees or groups are required to move forward this discussion on reformation of the Local Government Act and the Community Charter. I think it's specifically mentioned in the Community Charter though. Okay. And that that be a letter of support issued to the Regional District of Nanaimo. Okay. Can I get a seconder on that? That's normal. Thank Before you. Before CAO already, all of this time. Got it. It's scrambling. Any discussion or anything you'd like to have regarding the letter of support? Okay. All those in favor? There you go, Carrie. Thank you. Moving on to bylaws. Awesome. So, 8.1 recommendation. Recommend that council gives the first reading to public notification bylaw number 1051 2023. Okay, seconder. Councillor Wall, thank you. Discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. I, um, recommendation 8.2. Recommend that Council gives a second reading to public notification bylaw number 1051 2023. Hi, Secretary. Councillor Wall, thank you. 
Discussion? Oh, yeah. actually, yes. Councillor Wall. I would like to say that the, uh, this has come back and forth a few times between council and staff, and that the amendments made, I think, very well reflect what the intention was of the bylaw. Mm. Councillor Rowell, on the second oh, reading. I'm sorry. That flicked out of my hand. I was just doing an expression. No malice intent was in. Um, <laughs> sorry. On the second reading, you guys have comments. Okay, this is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Yes? No, I'd like to echo Councillor Wall's remarks, and that I am appreciative of staff making the necessary amendments to fully represent the interests of this body. Yeah, and I really doesn't know, but I didn't do it on the okay. I do apologize for the pen pulling from my hand. That's okay. All right. All those in favor? Unanimous and carried. Thank you. Uh, 8.3 recommendation. I'll take this one on. That council gives a third reading to the public notification bylaw number 1051 2023. Okay, seconder? Councillor Johnston. Thank you. I thought I'd give your voice a break. Okay. Uh, discussion? Good. Third one, guys. I just like to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All those in favor? Unanimous and carried. Thank I meant you. I put a note at the first at the first reading, I, but I didn't. You and that pen, I'm gonna lose an eye by the I think it's evening. just I don't know. Are you lotioning where you came in? No, no, it's cooking. Uh, there's a lot of grease on the pen. Anyway. Ah, there we go. Okay, 8.4 recommendation. That council gives the first reading to the council enumeration and expense file number 1054, 2024. Seconder. Councillor Johnston. Just note, this is not an increase to our pay. Our nothing is changing. All that's changing is the the pay frequency. frequency. The pay frequency. Our wages have not gone up. Pay frequency. We're going to say this for every single one of these readings. <laughs> yes, Councillor Rattle. I also appreciate that it's the coming together of quite a few different, like I think it was two or three bylaws that have come together. Anyways, I just want to point out 5.2. Um, and that I think the reasonable interpretation of meetings not being eligible for the per diem would be essentially any portfolio that you know a per diem would be required for the regular attendance of a various portfolios instead of having to list absolutely every single portfolio and amending it as it comes around. Is that a common understanding that that's the reasonable interpretation of 5.2? That it be essentially all council portfolios? Because Yes. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to clarify that because it's like this list that's yes. of all these different things and then there isn't yeah. every single portfolio mentioned in there. Okay. Next, next time we change it, we'll change it to all portfolios. Not changing anything. <laughs> <laughs> She's like hard at this. That's why I'm saying reasonable yeah. interpretation, right? Okay. Councillor <laughs> Wall. I just want to comment on the same 5.2. Um, it, it, in the old one, it mentioned that it wasn't for the like for DMs and travel for the regional districts. So that's still the case. Then, if it's being understood as if it's being understood as all portfolios, it's still the wording hasn't changed. It didn't change any wording. This is the way it was. Okay. So I guess a better way of wording my question would be: Is there there could not be. From the village of Puskupi, there would not be remuneration for travel to and from or per diem for PRD meetings. Mm. That's a question I got from somebody, so I uh, wanted to make sure that's very. Just yeah. for clarification, the village of Pus does not reimburse anybody for attending the PRD meetings. I understand that. The PRD takes care of the PRD people. Mm. Yes. I, I understand that. I just want to make sure that it's yeah. not, there's no confusion. You don't get covered for anything within 50 kilometers. Which makes sense. Yeah. yeah. 50 kilometers in the car when you're out around here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Councillor Rabble? Well, it's kind of essentially for our travel to, you know, far away places, right? Where we have to live somewhere else. Okay. Anyways. Okay. All those in favor? Unanimous and carried, thank you. 8.5 recommendation. That council gives a second reading to the council enumeration and expense bylaw number 1054-2024. Councilor Johnson seconds, thank you. Am I going to announce that this is not an increase to our pay? We've not. <laughs> I feel like we have to just keep 
keep saying that. Any discussion, Councillor Wall? Listen, you changed your mind. You didn't like it the first time this came forward, and now you're seconding it. He's growing <laughs> as a person. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All those in favor? Unanimous and carried. Thank you. Recommendation uh, 8.6 the council gives the third reading to the council remuneration and expenses bylaw number 1054 2024. Can I get a seconder? Councillor Johnson, thank you. Discussion? It, it's, it's another thing though. If I, okay. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. If I may. Essentially, because these are these were two or three different bylaws, the wording and the language of those previously approved bylaws have folded into this new bylaw, including you know, um, council code of conduct, expenses, per diems. That's all that language has been folded into this bylaw from previous council decisions. Yes, most like that's my understanding, but let me double check with the sheet who wrote it. The only thing that has changed is the quarterly to bi-weekly. Yeah. And the bylaw number. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. All those in favor? Unanimous and carried. Thank you. All right. Um, 9.1 CAO report. Well, I don't have much to report because I was on holidays. Yes, I know there's a spelling mistake. I apologize. It says at the last council meeting we asked our much, our portion of the housing needs assessment was. Um, it's going to be approximately 400 $500 for our portion with the PRRD. Okay? Yeah, it's not bad. So, that, we went to the OCP. We have, it's not a report. Oh. It's, I just put it oh, there because okay. there wasn't much to report. Okay. Um, I just want to bring up something that was discussed in our council meeting, or our staff meeting, sorry. Staff asked what council would like to do or what your thoughts are on planters this year and plants within the village, given that we are low on water and we're going to be probably in water conservation measures during the summer. Do we want to still reimburse? I'm giving you these questions. I'm going to bring a report forward to you about it, but I would like you to think about it. Um, do we want to encourage people to still plant planters and do we still want our public works department to be watering them even though we're underwater conservation measures. Uh, we also have baskets that we order for all the buildings plus the highway and down at the park. Do we want to put something forward to the public like maybe how innovative can you be with the planters mm -hmm. to use them for something that doesn't have to be watered as much. Maybe encourage drought resistant plants mm -hmm. or um, Here's 75 bucks, go to the dollar store and buy a bunch of plastic plants and stick them in there so it looks pretty. I don't know, but it's a question we were asked because it's a large, I mean, it takes staffing time, the water that, you know, technically we shouldn't use. How much, um, how much water do, like how many? Lots. So it is a lot of water. There's a lot of water because we water all of that. They water the plants down at the park. They water all the baskets. During the summer, we water the gardens over at the school for them. I think my struggle with that is we're also dealing with a bit of like food insecurity and the cost of food, and so I know many people make up that. There's only <clears throat> two platters that are usually vegetables or something. The other thing we could do is say to another proposed thing is put to people that, yes, you're welcome to plant plants, but you'll be responsible for watering them. Most likely when the water restrictions are on, it's going to be, you can only water on certain days, right? But the village doesn't follow that usually. So we, have that. Our own, we have our own schedule that we have to follow. I know. We keep all of these bright and alive. and So it's something I need you to think about. I don't want any decisions tonight. It's just something that I wanted to plant in your head that we need to think about with budgeting season coming up because usually we reimburse people up to $150 per planter to plant plants. We, our budget, our flower budget that we spend is usually what? Three to five thousand? Three to five thousand dollars that we spend just on plants for the hanging baskets and the planters that we do. Um, and down at the park. Okay. Councilor Walt? Just a thought. 
but if we encourage people to plant food, yeah, that's what I'm so about. the planters, just, just a thought, it's not a motion or anything, but if we just said, hey, you can use the planters, same as last year, except we would like it to be food that you're planting so that it helps with the food insecurity that we're going through in the cost. Is, is the understanding that that food is available to all of the public? Yeah. Well, it's in the middle of the street. Outside, the, outside our municipality as well as inside? Well, it's in the middle of the street. We can't just say, like, if, if somebody pulls out a carrot, I, like, I don't know. I don't really, it doesn't matter to me where they're from. Mm. But how do you regulate what people take? I'll give you an example. Last year, in, when I'm sitting in my office, I can see what people are doing. And I've seen people go to the planters that have had food in it and take everything. Yeah. One family mm -hmm. did this repeatedly. Oh. So how do you, like, are you concerned about that? Is that a, a, a worry for you? Is that, because I watched one family do it over and over. They'd arrive with one mode of transportation, then they'd arrive in another mode of transportation, and <laughs> So oh, I was just wondering how you like somebody uh, walking over to the post office, they you know sneak a snap piece, and and that <laughs> that's fun. But what I witnessed this year was people, and I get it, people are going hungry or whatever. But is it a concern for council that somebody's going to go clear out all of one planter and then there's nothing left for other people? And so those are just things yeah. to think about, right? Yeah. Well, that's tragedy. The commons, it's in a public space. If somebody really needs it that much or has the intent to take such a thing, you know, it is there. And that's the risk of planting it. Um, we once personally planted, and for example, a bunch of carrots were pulled out that we planted that were very small. It was very unfortunate, but it might have just been kids. But well, there's like room in the street. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was really unfortunate. But yeah. essentially, that's the risk of it. But I still believe that the beauty that it provides and the you know educational opportunity it provides for you know hey I'm you know I'm planting this and they take their kids along that's beautiful mm -hmm. and then also I think looking into drought resistant planting you know especially for the hanging baskets you know what flowers look pretty but actually use very little water you know what's available I know and flowers usually consume quite a lot of water I think we have to be strategic in the approach but I don't think we abandon it outright I think that we navigate the, the water restrictions accordingly because it'll be a persistent thing, especially with the current weather cycle and lack of snowpack. Um, but the other thing too is if there is, the, well, there is this level of food insecurity experienced by a few of the folks that live here and around here, maybe we look into, you know, more community focused community gardens, you know, that, that something be taken on. Maybe not solely by the municipality, but maybe community groups. The municipality doesn't have the resources to take that on. Oh, I understand. And that's oh. that's why I'm saying people in their own initiative taking it on and planting it. Provide a space or something like on public I'd be interested to see what Dawson Creek is going to do. Well, whatever they do, we'll have to follow. Exactly. So if they're going to continue to plant and beautify their entire community, then I'm going to continue to beautify mine. Okay, so this is just food for thought for now, please. Yeah, I have, I have a yeah, food for thought. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> what if somehow we encourage people, because right now we have a lot of front front lawns that people water in the summertime and and we don't the, actually. People are pretty good; they don't really water the, the, the lawns around here. We're, we're going to promote brown is better this year. Yeah. yeah. What if we promote people turning the front yards into gardens for food and water? <laughs> Because it helps with food insecurity yeah. and produce actually uses less water generally than grass does. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it, it could be a it could be a kind of a win win if we could encourage people to do that. So now just a thought, just a thought. Councillor Rebel. The other thing too is water. You know, states experiencing water restrictions like California, they'll do this competition like we do with our Christmas light up, where people actually change their front yards to be water resistant, drought resistant plants and rock gardens and whatnot, we could potentially host a competition simply giving a small reward for it to see the most innovative front yard transformation where folks go from grass to rock gardens and drought resistant plantings. Okay. 
which has been exemplified in other municipalities and local governments and states throughout uh, the, okay. uh, North America. Good idea. Councillor Wall? Last comment on this, on your comment. Las Vegas, Nevada has done that. And I don't know if anybody here has been like in the suburbs of Las Vegas, but it's amazing. You, you walk down the street and it's just rock gardens and people have different types of plants and trees and there's no grass. Like you can walk for miles and there's just no grass to be seen. I'm not saying we should do that, but it, it it's an idea and it has been done. I would, if we could look into... But still visually impressive. It's visually impressive. It's not like anywhere else you go where you see front yard, ooh, grass. It's, it's quite interesting and the people there seem to like it. So I don't know if that's an initiative they've put on or people just really like the rock garden. Anything else you want to add? Okay, wonderful, thank you very much. Alrighty, moving on to 9.2 action items. My apologies, I didn't have time to update the list of the updated so. Council Wall. I was contemplating around the uh, spray paint policy that's on the action item list. Yeah. If, do you think there's a possibility we could incorporate that into our park? That's also on the action item list? Which park? Next door. Yeah. They put our spray paint thing in the park. No, I wouldn't want them to spray paint part of parts of the park. No, like put put the thing for them to spray paint in the park. Yeah, no. I know. Yeah, the paint's gonna wander. Yes, that's what I was worried <laughs> about. The paint will it wander. may wander to the building. It may like if it's different. I'm not if saying we... put it right against the building. No, mm -hmm. I know. I just yeah, I don't know. I will tell you, we've seen the preliminary conceptual drawings. There won't be anywhere for you to put anything to spray paint in that park. I'm yeah, just thinking. Yeah, I get what you're thinking. I totally do, but at the same time, I'm like, eh. Unless we can incorporate a cement wall. Very friendly cement but, wall. But I'm worried about our building getting spray painted. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about as well. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, well, they're already cool with that spray painting one thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd much rather keep it out of the spray park. Or the over there. That park, brand right new there. beautiful park that we're building, yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, well. uh, for the transit, I see there's a question on there. Can we delete this? Dawson Creek released their strat plan earlier this week. And as part of their strat plan, they have incorporated a transit, public transit connecting with Puskupi as part of the strat plan. So I would like to see that stay on the action list. Because I feel like coming down the pipes shortly, there may be some staff to staff contact or some school letter on board. We did have a bit of a conversation um, with the uh, mayor. You should be reading, yeah, with the mayor of Dawson Creek. And at this point in time, like it's still very much in just this discussion phase. There's not a lot. I know it's in there. Yes, Ms. Stokes. Councilor Johnston, or Johnston. <laughs> oh, look, you're doing it too. <laughs> I'm only asking to take it off. It will always be on my radar. I have notes about it. And if Dawson reaches out about it, then by all means, it will be brought forward again. I'm just concerned because this is from 2023 and you guys put it on hold. I'd like to, I'd like to see it on there because I know people from the public do look at our agendas and whatnot after they come out, so. It's less work, just leave it there. Don't change that's up. That's up to you guys. So, if um, Ms. Stokes, the CAO, is asking to have it removed, what do members of council feel? I, I'm Ms. Stokes. <laughs> you know I know that it will, really like, good. yeah, she's really good <laughs> at keeping things on her radar. She has a running list going all the time. It's just as we add our 2024 item, that one will be stuck in 2023. So I think like that's her thing is it will just always be sort of... That's fine because it's, if it's stuck in 2023, it's, it's something that we're still working on. It's just gonna take a while to, and I want the public to be aware that it's still on the radar. It's something that I want people to be aware that we are working towards. Okay, Councillor Revel. Um, what was the original intent of this action item to engage with Dawson Creek in their, you know, as they move forward with their transit plan? 
planning, um, essentially incorporating Kuskupi as an offshoot, and then also exploring, or if that is an option, because that would just make sense, because on a map you just look at it, how close in proximity they are. And then also, you know, other alternatives like step up and ride. So are we putting it on pause simply because we've explored those options and it's been put on hold because we're waiting for the response? And that's not the urgency of the action item? Uh, it's difficult. I can't really divulge too much about the conversations um, that are being had because, yeah. Um, it is still in the conversation stage. Nothing has been agreed upon. Nothing has been really been mapped out. Nothing has really been, it's just still in the reaching out to other, I don't know. I say it not be removed then because it's in progress. It's an ongoing item, just as the alcohol policy is. We haven't given up on that yet. It's you know not front and center. Think it's still on the stove. I think we're gonna be. It's still on the stove. It's still on the stove, <laughs> but not on the back burner. Yeah. It's okay. on the back burner, but it's not off the stove. It's not cold and in the fridge. Okay. All right. Well, at this point in time, we'll just leave it on. Okay, moving on to, so there's nothing under capital and special products because we haven't done our budget yet. So moving on to council calendars. Uh, anybody away? Yeah, I'd like to be. No. <laughs> Ray's like, I'd like oh, to be in full I need a Vegas. <laughs> right? Yeah, so I need to go check it out. Can I it <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Rabble? Um, out of curiosity, I know it's not relating to the February or March 2024 calendars, but in the near future, in potentially April and in September, there is a like, high likelihood of conferences conflicting with council meetings that have been slated. And I'm just wondering what the... Well, we yeah. we haven't had the budget di um, discussion for our conferences for 2024, so mm -hmm. once we sort of have that budget mapped out and we've completed that process, then we can begin looking at mm -hmm. that. At this point in time, because our budget has not been done, um, I'm like I don't think that we should start worrying about it currently until we've at least agreed upon the set amount of money in the conferences we're going to based on our budget. Yeah. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. No. Councillor Wall. It was going to be my report, but I'll do it now. Um, so the. This is on the calendar. Okay. It's regarding the NCLGA. Mm -hmm. is, is coming up soon, and the deadline for the, the cheaper hotels is fast approaching. And I'm, I would like to propose that myself, Councilor Rabel, and Mayor Beach attend the NCLGA this year. That's not it. There's a travel report that needs to come forward. Yeah. And then that will come forward and once the budget. Just for information, the hotels are already booked. Oh. Okay. Well, that's why I want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so we got the the, the deal, so that, that works out. So yeah, once the budget has been been complete, then that report, the travel report, will be created. And that report will probably come forward before the budget's complete, just so you know. We're just excited to be proactive. I see that. Also for, also for planning, it's not that far around the corner. I know, you're blinking, a month has gone by. Okay, mm -hmm. anything else? Anybody going away? Oh, I'm leaving in March. I'm going to New York City. Nice. <laughs> I leave for New York on the one to come right. Come on, we'll have a great time. Um, I leave on March 18th and I return on March 22nd. So I will not be here. Who's that mayor then? I don't know. I'm going to be a drinking buddy in New York. <laughs> We're all in New York. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll just do the council meeting from there. <laughs> um, yeah, so I am gone those days in March. Okay, anybody else traveling? I think it could be Councillor Johnston as acting mayor for March. I got my hands. Okay, all right. Well, then we're going to move on to reports. So, Councillor Johnston, what should we not do? Uh, I did the OCP on Monday. Very interesting. Other than that, I haven't done them all. Did you live in your best life? Oh, I wish. <laughs> Have you heard okay. anything from the, um, you do the Oil and Gas Commission? Yes. 
I've been reading their emails. There's been nothing really really interesting. Yeah. And the same with the Hydro. I mean, they give a bunch of money to the little communities. Yes. Like their, their donations and that. But other than that, nothing really. Yeah, there's not a lot happening. Nothing really to report about. It's not worried about the land act changes or anything like that? Yeah, nothing that was in there that I read. Yeah. In my last report. A lot of it hasn't come out yet. No. So that's a bit of the other thing. They're still waiting for the I'll watch for it. Please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good, good point. Maybe keep that in your mm -hmm. radar. Rig. Rig. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting so funny this evening. Okay, perfect. All right. Councillor Rabble, what have you been up to? All righty. So, um, I went to a food bank meeting. I don't know if I mentioned that last summer this time, but it was another food bank meeting where the a bylaw was moved. Well, essentially the bylaws for the board were moved forward. Uh, a lot of great conversations. I reached out to the CAO regarding um, essentially the ability to, you know, the ability to potentially make changes inside the facility and that the village is saying that, you know, that's a reasonable thing, just approach the church because they're the actual leaseholder. So conveying that back to the food bank, so that was a piece there. Um, there's a library AGM coming in February, and I'm excited to see that coming up, and I would, I'm very excited to attend. I believe it's on the 15th, um, so folks can come up for that. Um, a letter was submitted by the library, which will be a part of the budgeting talks, and so that will come up in the near future, uh, just to mention it though. And essentially, okay, that's different. Okay, I attended the OCP workshop on Monday, and you know, good that we're moving forward with the OCP. Um, I have my comments and um, <laughs> input to be provided as soon as possible to staff and the contractors. Um, excited to see this community moving in such a positive direction. Um, this is a great place to live, and I believe this is one of the best places on earth, and I'm excited to be here, truly. So, with that, I attended the School District 59 strategic planning session that was held about a week or two ago. Um, interestingly enough, one of the statistics that stood out to me is that on average there's a 25 to 29 percent absenteeism rate, which really just shocked me. Um, I was very surprised to hear this, and it depends on the day of the week, and it's sometimes different folks, but you know it depends on vacations and illness, and you know um, you know not particularly one go to school that day and whatnot. Like but absentee in students or in staff? In students. Oh yes. Which, anyways, um, yeah. Does, does that mean that on any given day, on average, a quarter of the kids are not at school? Based off of the numbers that were yeah. presented, that's what I would, you know, interpret it to be. Yeah. Twenty-five to twenty-nine percent, which is quite that's interesting. But essentially, the school district is looking to proactively see what can be done to reduce that absenteeism rate. Obviously, it's every kid in school every day if possible would be the ideal, but you know, it's working with folks where they're at and what's going on. Um, interesting, so they've got three priorities that they're moving forward with. Priority one, equity. Priority two, foundational, skill and core comp foundational skills and core competency. Priority three, sustainable use of resources, infrastructure, programs, and technology. Um, essentially, they were going over a variety of different literacy rates and metrics and how closely compared we are to the province and the provincial standard, just making sure that the assessments are keeping to pace with the provincial average, um, that they're looking at their budget, that as a northern, rural, and spread out area that they serve, that there are increased costs in regard to heating and busing for students that are not usually seen down in the lower mainland. Um, and then what's really exciting to me, oh, and then you've got until April 24th, 2024 to give feedback on the budget. Um, there's about 3,700 students enrolled at any given time within School District 59. Um, I'm really interested in some of the cool projects that uh, folks in partnership with School District 59 uh, and various bands have done in regards to extracurricular boxing around Chetwin where, and I think this could be a model that we could utilize out here, and that's why I'd like to mention it. Essentially, there are um, young folks that live out on reserve near Chatwin, um, you know, Soto in particular, 
And these kids are able to attend after school programming because they have transportation afterwards to get them out to where they live because they don't live in Shetland. And that saw a huge increase in the kids attending after school programs like dance and basketball and whatnot. And I think that's just fantastic. So it's some low hanging fruit to get infrastructure and the facilita facilitation of events and thinking about logically, okay, what do people need? And especially around here, it's transportation in a lot of ways, especially when you're a young person and you don't have a car or can't drive or a family may not have that second car because it's you know used by the primary income earner and then the kid just has to saunter back home after school because they can't stick around for that game because they've got to take the bus home. So I think that's definitely an interesting thing to consider. Um, and yeah, yeah, lots of interesting conversations at School District 59. I wish them all the best in their strategic plan development and their budget development, which is open for public um, review and comments until April 24th. Okay, perfect. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Wall. As I mentioned, the NCLJ is coming up soon. I'd really like to attend that. I've been looking at online some of the uh, different sessions that are happening in Houston and Smithers, and it, it looks like quite interesting and very insightful. A lot of big things coming up. I'm like, super excited to announce that the Legion has received $29,000 in donations from people in Poos Coopy, their members here in Poos, to fix their roof. That is such an amazing community support that nowadays it's hard to get a dollar from anyone, never mind 29,000. <clears> and on top of that, I don't have the figures in front of me, but they also are extremely thankful to have received a grant using our village grant writer yeah. as well. That's not, in, but that money they got from the grant is not included in that $29,000. Wow. So huge support for the Legion there. Thank you everybody who donated. That's just amazing. I attended the OCP session uh, earlier this week. Rambled on more than I should have maybe, but I did attend that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just yeah, like, well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> That's what I did. Um, the uh, the Dawson Creek has released a strat plan, so I looked over that, and I'm very happy that they have included transportation to Puskupi via public transit as part of the strat plan. So the conversations that we have been having and I have been having with people with Dawson Creek, I'm glad that they've included that in the strat plan, and they've also included a walking trail as part of the plan to connect Dawson and Poos. So I know that's something that a lot of people in Poos Coopier want to see. Well, it's it's on their books, it's on their radar, it's on our radar, and I'm very happy to see that we are gonna be working together with that. Now, with that being said, Mayor Beach, um, coming up at some point at the RD, it, there's a little blurb there about that they're gonna have to bring forward to the RD to go through RD lands, so just mm -hmm. keep an eye out for when that eventually makes it to the RD. But um, I'm really excited to see movement on that project, though. Like, really, really excited to see movement on that project. Maybe in a few years, our kids will be able to bike to the pool or, or whatever. It's not going to be along the highway. That'll be fantastic. Um, I think that's my report. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right, um, my report, so I sent a bunch of my reports out to you guys via email, but, um, <clears throat> and I sent this blurb I'm about to say to you. Uh, January 23rd, I attended the check presentation at the Pooskipi Food Bank. Ovintiv kindly donated $5,000 to our Pooskipi Food Bank, which um, is huge for, for them. They're, you know, they've been working really, really hard to make a comeback within the community, and, and uh, I think they've made a pretty substantial Debt, um, dent in, in a lot of some of the struggles that some of our families have been having. So it was a huge supporter of that. Yeah. January 23rd, I met with the staff in the office for our weekly check-in. January 24th, I attended the leadership table in Fort St. John's. This is a table made up of other local municipal mayors, PRK directors, and local indigenous leaders in the region. And this table was created as a way for us to bring our concerns together collectively and discuss ways to get our voices to higher governments. So I attended that in Fort St. John. On the 25th, I attended the PRRD meeting. Um, I sent out the report, and I sent out a bit of an extra regarding the um, emergency management legislation and the regulatory impacts. So there were some members of the public that had gone to the meeting that stressed um, concerns that they have over the new legislation. Okay. 
Um, I chose myself at that point to speak out um, regarding the report and the legislation due to, to the public outcry that we've been hearing um, and because members of the Peace River Regional District were going down to a conference in Vancouver that was happening two days before the LGLA um, and they were going to bring back a bunch more information about it so I voted against it at that point in time for that reason um, yes, Council. Which legislation is this? Sorry, I must have. Oh, no, this is the emergency management le legislation and the regulatory, regulatory impacts. Oh, okay. Yes. I just missed which legislation you're talking about there. No worries. Um, and then on January 31st, February 2nd, I attended the NCLGA. Uh, it was pretty good. A bit of a slow start. The first day I was kind of like, oh gosh. I wasn't too sure how much I was really going to get out of it, and then it really kind of picked up. Yeah. So um, I attended a presentation by Frank Leonard. I sent this out to you guys as well. What did I say? You said NCLA. Oh, sorry, LGLA. Sorry, I do this all the time. <laughs> um, with Frank Leonard um, on governance and the management divide, divide. So just talking about how to um, better govern and manage municipalities. I attended a panel on indigenous realities, talking about different indigenous governments and how they work with municipal governments, which is sort of a bit of what that leaders table in Fort St. John does, so that was quite relevant to what I'm currently doing. Um, I attended um, a bunch of sessions on all the current provincial legislation on housing mm -hmm. and land and the Emergencies Act, and there's a bunch of different things going on. So it was- Good. It's a lot of information. Like it was like <laughs> so much information that at times I sort of we, we would all just look a bit glazed over because it was like there's really not all the information, but they have some of the information, but they can mm -hmm. only talk to the information that they have and then speculate about the information they don't have. So literally at some point in time I just look and we'd all just look really like glazed over. <laughs> like so I was I was glad I wasn't the only one that was sitting there going like what? <laughs> So it's tons and tons of notes, lots of stuff on yeah, the housing, um, lots of stuff on um, the local crisis, global attraction, and um, um, environmental disaster stuff, um, budgeting 101, climate disaster and risks to local government. So yeah, I attended lots of things on that. I've sent that report out to you. Make sure you guys check it out. On February 5th, I met with Mayor Dover of, the, of Dawson Creek and uh, Mr. Henderson. He's the CAO there, right? Thank you. Um, um, just to really like talk about the happenings within their community and happenings ar happening around here, um, and different ways that we can support Dawson Creek and how Dawson Creek can support us. So whether that's like letters of, of support that they're sending out to uh, different ministers, or you know, just really cre like creating a nice bridge of contact between our two municipalities because we work so closely. Um, during that time, we'd also talked about um, the mayor and council of Dawson Creek are traveling down to Vancouver to meet with Minister Farnsworth to discuss the increase of crime in the area. And after speaking with Mayor Dover, um, I feel that it would be beneficial for our, our community to write a letter of support to Minister Farnsworth discussing our issues with crime in the area as well, um, as well as lend our supportive voice to them. So what they're going to be doing is, because they only get 30 minutes to talk about some of the the issues that are going on. They're creating a package and they're going to oh. give this package to him and hopes he reads it, I guess. So um, Mayor Dober had talked about us writing a letter of support that he was <coughs> in that package. And then he approached um, members of the PRRD on Wednesday, to Monday, on Monday about writing letters of support to go into that package as well. So Ms. Stokes, do you need a motion to write that letter of support? Perfect. So I'd like to make a motion um, that uh, staff write a letter of support for the city of Dawson Creek as well as um, discussing some of the issues that we are facing with crime in the area. Are you seconding it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you by Councillor Ravel. Thank you. Um, yeah, so basically they're going to bring that down, they're going to put our letter in their package and hopefully he'll read it. And by the sounds of it, they're going to ask all the directors in the PRD to write one as well. So. That's kind of where, where we're at. Councillor yeah, Neville? Oh. Um, <laughs> when, when are they presenting this to um, Minister Farmer? They leave on the 17th and they seem on the 20th. Is that correct? I remember correct? Yeah, it's before our next council. It's yeah, pretty pretty quick, it's before, yeah. yeah, it's like pretty quick. Yeah, so that's something we may have to approve over email. 
most likely. So keep an eye on your email boxes because when it goes out, it'll need to be approved quite quickly. Okay? But we're approving the writing of the letter now. Yes, and then they're going to write it, and then they, we're going to have to approve the letter over email because it's got to be sent before the next council meeting. Would that require a special meeting? No. no. We could do it over email. We could do a great letter of support. So, all those in favor? Unanimous. Perfect. Yeah, so it'll all get fleshed out. Don't worry about it. Um, February 5th, I attended a meeting with her, her uh, Urban Citrus go over our OCP draft, which I found very beneficial. February 6th, I attended a meeting in Dawson Creek with our municipal mayors and PRD directors to discuss the future of the Dawson Creek Regional Airport. We are currently in the discussion phase, and I will bring more back to the board once we have fleshed out the details over the next coming months. More plays? <laughs> I don't know. We're currently in the discussion phase, so I can't really say anything. <laughs> um, yes? On, on that topic regarding the Dawson Creek Regional Airport, I know at one time there were discussions around a regional airport authority. Is that anything that's been... I don't know. I can't discuss it. Okay. And a good contact to have regarding flights would be the mayor of Prince George. Yes. I think it's it's all being handled and dealt with and all the right people who need to be contacted are going to be contacted. So, okay. Yeah. I can't really talk about it. So. But when I can, I'll bring it forward and let you guys know. Um, okay. That's me reports. Uh, all my reports from the PRRD and the LGLA will be in the minutes of the next agenda. So for if the public would like to read them, they'll be there. All right, so question period. Nobody's here. Um, <laughs> gallery is empty. Um, so we are going to move to our in camera. So item number 12, so let's read recommendation 12.1. The council moves to in camera as per section 91A and C A personal information about an identifiable individual who holds or is being considered for position as an officer employee or agent of the municipality or other position appointed by the municipality. C, labor relations and other employee relations. I get a seconder. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my God, that's not even that 